Welcome to the Swim Swim Podcast. I'm today's host, Coleman Hodges, and joining us today, he's an NCAA All-American for the Arizona State Sun Devils, and most recently, he is the world champion in the 200-meter backstroke from Fukuoka, Japan. Uh, He hails from Hungary, coming to us today from Tempe, Arizona. Today, we are sitting down with Hubi Koch. Hubi, how's it going, man? Good, good. How are you? Well, um, thanks so much for joining us. You just got back to Tempe yesterday, so I appreciate you coming on. Um, what uh, what was what was your travel schedule like um, after World Championships ended? Did you get to go home to Hungary for a bit? Yeah, so it was pretty busy. Um, I think I left on the thirty first of August, went through Helsinki, um, then got back to Budapest, spent about thirteen days at home, and then had to get straight back on the plane, come back here to to start the year. Nice. What uh, what do you do when you're home? Are you from Budapest or the surrounding area? Yeah, yeah. I was born. I was born like right outside of Budapest, but I've lived there my entire well, most of my life, and. Um, so I was home for about 13 days. And in those 13 days, I was basically with my family and with my friends and just try to, you know, try to catch up uh, with them on, on how they've been doing, how, how everybody's been doing back at home. And so it was nice to see them again. Nice. Do you have any uh, like favorite places you go when, you know, th- this time when you've been home or things you do that, you know, you can't really go or do anywhere else? Um, not really, actually. It's mostly just the people that's important that, that are important you know i go to some of my favorite restaurants there and just just try to spend as much time with them as possible and and yeah i just go like you know kind of all over the place i was actually at um the hungarian junior national championships as well for a day just to see my brother swim there so that was kind of a fun moment to be there but but yeah i was kind of just all over the place be try to be with everybody as much as possible and and yeah i enjoyed my time there uh, especially going to a swim meet, but I'm not, I mean, I know, uh, Hungary is a, is a great swimming country and has a great swimming culture. There's a lot of fans of the sport there. Um, were you well received when you came home in terms of, you know, did, were, were people recognizing you, um, especially at the Hungarian junior national meet, um, just because you, you were coming off of a world title. Yeah, I mean, a lot more people recognize me this time around when I get when I got back home. So I was it was kind of a good feeling as well. And when I went to the to the junior nationals there, they kind of gave me a standing ovation as well when I got there the first day. So that was really nice. And um, and yeah, so I mean, I wasn't really around too many people that I didn't know for those thirteen days because I didn't really have a lot of time. But for the most part, a lot of people, a lot of a lot more people recognized me. Yeah. Yeah. Was that a meet that you had competed at at one point as well? Oh, yeah. Like I competed at that meet from, I think, the age of 14, probably until I was 18. And so I, I racked up a lot of medals there over, over the years. And, uh, you know, it was, it was just good to go back to something like that and, and watch my watch my brother swim. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm glad your time at home went well. Um, we're going to kind of work our way backwards because I've got a lot of questions to ask you uh, just about your past year as a whole, but, um, obviously world championships went pretty well. So you swam, you opted to swim the hundred and 200 backstrokes there where you went best times in both. Obviously you you won that 200 backstroke. You made the final in the hundred. Um, so looking at your college lineup, you know, things looked, the events looked a little different just because you were swimming two IM, four IM. Uh, two back. You also did some butterfly throughout the the semester that you were there, or the season that you were there. Um, so I'm curious, kind of how you and your coaches decided 100 and 200 back would be your best events at World Champs. So when I got to ASU, I only got here in December. So NCAA was technically four or three months out of of where I started. So Bob didn't really have a like a basic or I mean he had a basic idea of what I could do because of the events that I swam in the past 
And so that's why we spend the four, or that's why I spend the four AM, two AM, two back because those were when those were events that I would always have done in the past and I was like pretty decently good at. But especially after NCAA's, when we got back to most of the fifty meter pool trainings, uh, we saw that backstroke was beginning to be my best stroke or beginning to be my best event, and I was doing like pretty good um, in practices like leading up to world champs. So. Initially, I was entered in the two back, one back, one fly, two IM, and also the four IM potentially, at, at, like in the beginning of Worlds. Um, but then we sat down, and I think like a month before uh, World Champs uh, started, we decided on the, the one back and the two back. So Bob told me that those are the two I should really focus on. Nice. And were you pretty happy with that event lineup? I mean, were there other events that you may have wanted to swim or, or were you nervous at all about swimming the hundred tuner back uh, on, on that international stage? So it was interesting because I've never actually swam a hundred back in like not even a European championship. So that was like starting off with a hundred back at worlds was kind of really new to me, but I liked the challenge. So I wasn't, I didn't have any trouble with it, especially the two back. I was kind of relaxed going into those two events because I knew that there wasn't really any pressure on me because those are events that I've never swam before, but I actually felt a lot of pressure before the four by one freestyle relay, because I was on the first day and you know, that like relays are kind of weird because you don't swim for yourself. You just kind of swim for three other people. And we were in a really tough spot because Milak obviously didn't, um, didn't swim a world. So we would have, we would have had an extra two seconds there if he would have swam that, but we didn't. So we had to really, really, really try that that morning, try a pretty hard day to get in. We we didn't, but I swam a two second PB there in that relay. So I was actually really happy about that time. And I was like, this could be a really good world. <laughs> That's awesome. I didn't even realize you swam the 400 free relay. Uh, did you know you were going to be swimming on that relay, like coming into the meet or when did you find out about that? And what what led to that 100 free two second pb i mean that's awesome yeah so um i think two months before the meet there was like there was all these questions flying around if milak was going to swim in it or he wasn't going to swim in it. and i was like you know i might as well put my name into that you know arena maybe to get paid for it so i started swimming some some decent 100 100 frees you know and and i think i had a meet right after or right before or like two months before worlds or something here in Arizona where we had the, had the meet. And, um, I went up 50.0 in the morning and after like a 200 backstroke and we weren't really tapered for that meet at all. So, I mean, that was pretty decent. And I think the captain of the Hungarian Federation, Fe Hungarian Federation called me after Milak decided not to swim to ask me if I wanted to swim in it. And I would have swam the 50 fly that day at worlds to start off with. So I was like, okay, I might as well send the hundred free relay then instead, and, you know, try and try and get a final here together. Yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's great. Um, congrats on that one. Um, that's yeah. hundred hundred free seems like a fun event. And like you said, swimming a relay is a bit of a different experience. Um, but then you go right into the hundred back, which as you said, you never swam it on an international stage before. Uh, you go best times. I think you went at least two best times and ended up at a 53 low. Um, I mean, can you tell me about the progression through heat semis and finals of that hundred back and kind of what you figured out along the way in terms of how to swim that race best for you? Yeah. So it was really interesting because obviously not just the fact that I didn't ever swim a hundred back at worlds. I never really swam a hundred at worlds ever. Like I would have swam maybe the hundred fly uh, the previous year, but I couldn't swim that either. So I never really swam like a sprint event, I guess. Um, so that was weird as well in itself. But I think going into that first day, I, I had a really good morning swim. So I saw, I beat the national record by three tenths, I believe, or like, 28 hundredths or something so that was a really good swim and I got second in the morning and I was like okay okay that's uh that's pretty fast so maybe I shouldn't have gone that fast but we talked with Bob about it before and we, we we said that I might as well you know give it give it my all in the morning because my best time leading up to it was 53 8 maybe so that was like a 7 tenth improvement 
And so I think I swam about the same time in the afternoon than in the semis. I think I'm maybe um, swam 700 slow or something like that. So it was pretty, pretty consistent. Um, and then I swam the my best time in the final by 100th of a second. So I beat my like morning swim time of the day before by 100th. So maybe if I swim a little bit less slow in, or, or maybe a little bit less fast in the morning to go a little bit slower, then maybe I would have had more energy for the final. But you know, I might have missed the finals or I might have missed the semifinals as well. So I, I, this is the way I had to do it. This is the way I had to swim it. So um, overall, I'm really happy with it. But I think both me and Bob know that I should have probably gone in the 53 there. Uh, did you, were you swimming the, the race different ways as you kind of moved through or were you figuring out little pieces of the strategy? I mean, and, and as well, what, what do you think you could have done to put you under that 53 second barrier? Yeah. So I think the morning swim was the fastest first 50. So I had the fastest first 50 in the morning swim. And I was like trying to go slower in the first 50 in the afternoon. So I think I split with, with Murphy in the, in the first 50 of that race where he almost negative split that second 50. And he just left me in the dust in that race. So I was like, I'm never going to watch anybody else again. Um, and so I tried to swim my own kind of race in, in the final. And I was next to, next to Hunter uh, Armstrong in the, in the final, he was on lane eight and I was on lane seven, I think might've been, yeah, I think the lane seven. So, you know, it was, it was definitely a learning experience because I've never swam that event before. So, and I think the final, I was like midway between the semifinal or the, the morning, morning final time and the semifinal time. So it wasn't bad, but I definitely have to take it out faster if I want to go into 53. Gotcha. Uh, so, so yeah, huge learning, learning curve for you there. Um, you know, ma made the world champs final and then heading into the tuner back, um, you know, where were you mentally after having made that final, after having, you know, gone a couple best times, best time in the hundred free to, to start things off. Um, how are you feeling about heading into that 200 back? Yeah. So I think that was really, really like a key part of my world's getting into that hundred backstroke finals, just to see what a, like, you know, what a final is like in that meet. you know, it's always good to like have a little bit of a test run before it. Um, and I had that, um, in the hundred free, I guess in the first day. So I saw what the meet was like, and then going into the hundred back, I got into final and semifinal. So I saw what those were like. So I was in a really, really good spot leading up to the 200 backstroke. So I knew I knew exactly what to do exactly what to like, kind of look forward to in, in that respect. Um, and then I would have had the two, well, technically I would have had the two IM on that day, but we already knew beforehand that I would scratch it. Um, it was only kind of there for just in case, you know, something, something happened, but it, it didn't. So we pulled, pulled out of that to IM and then just focus straight on the two, the two back for those, for those two days. Yeah. Do, do you think that you'll probably keep this event lineup for heading into this next year with, with Paris 24? Most definitely. I think I can't let go of this two back, obviously. I think that's in a really, really good spot now. So I can, you know, let go of that. And, you know, I think the 2IM is also in a pretty decent spot. You know, I don't think it's on Leon's level yet. Uh, Leon's been doing really, really well in that event. But I think I would have done, like, pretty decently well in that. I've been, you know, kind of around about my best time for two years. So it's kind of annoying that I still haven't, you know, swam faster than my world junior record. But... <laughs> Uh, we'll see, we'll see if that's something to think about that too. I am. And then, you know, the hundred back, I think it's on its own day. I don't think I'm going to swim the four I am. So, but we'll see, we'll see. There's another year of training, training to go through. And, you know, I've only been with Bob for half a year. So maybe, maybe even another event shows up on, on the list, you know, we'll, we'll see. And we'll talk about um, how to set it up. Yeah. Uh, so sorry, I got a little sidetracked going back to this tuner back. Um, so like you said, you kind of knew how to handle prelims, semis and finals a little bit better. And that shows on paper, at least you were 157.2 in prelims, 155.99 in finals and then, uh, or sorry, in semis and then, you know, finals, you throw down that 154.1, um, again, in terms of, of race strategy, what do you feel like you picked up? through moving through prelims and semis um and then how did you attack that finals race 
Yeah, so I try to be very um, conservative, I guess, on the first swim because I knew that if I really like go a really, really fast time in the morning, there won't really be a lot of energy left in me um, for the next two swims. So I think I did a pretty good job with that, that first morning swim, though I wasn't really feeling well that day for some reason. I don't know what happened, but my, my heart was just beating like crazy. And that's never really happened to me before. It wasn't pressure or anything. It was just kind of, I think I might've had bad food or something. And I might've, that, that might be the thing that I threw up afterwards in the final, because I was, I was kind of sick afterwards, but it was weird. Um, I was just kind of relieved that I got through with, with that morning swim. I tried to make sure that I would win my, my heat. Um, I try to make sure that I would heat, win every single heat out of all three of my swims. So that was kind of my main goal. Um, but I didn't really do the, the plan that me and Bob discussed that morning swim. So it was kind of weird. Um, so I, I think he told me to go out fast in the first hundred. We discussed me going out fast in the first hundred and maybe, um, going slower a bit on the last 50 if I saw where everybody was but I went out way too slow on the first hundred so I gotta fix that um now in this next year and 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 not kind of fall asleep I guess on that first hundred but yeah I think the semi-final was a pretty decent swim like I swam 400 slower than my personal best at that stage so it was it was very really similar um with with my with my qualification time and then Going into that final, I knew that I had to really take it out that first hundred because I knew that everybody else would be going really fast. Um, and then it was just a just a case of holding on on that that last fifty. Could you uh, see Ryan from where you were? Because you were in lane three, and he was all the way over in lane six. Yeah, no, I couldn't see him, and I I could have looked over to him, but I knew that that's just going to take away from my time. So I just stayed uh, on my lane, just looked at, I didn't look at anybody. I just, just kind of focused on what I was doing. And I think that really helped me uh, execute the plan that, that, that I needed to do and, and what we discussed with Bob. So I think that was, that was a perfect way to swim it, I guess, in that, in that situation. And then maybe if I would have looked at him, I would have got thrown out of, out of my, um, my rhythm. So I think, you know, it was, it was a good way that I found it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, winning, winning time of 154.1 in that 200 backstroke. Um, can, can you take me through your, your initial reaction of becoming a world champion after you realize you touched first? Um, yeah. So I think the first thing I saw was, you know, on the backstroke, when I, when I looked at the, like the scoreboard, I guess, I only saw my time. So I only saw one time on the board and I knew that if I could see it, then that meant that I won. So I didn't even see the time first. I didn't even see who, who came second, who came third, anything like that. I just knew initially that, that I was a world champion. So I think the first thing I felt was just, just relief. Honestly, it was, it was a tough two days, um, tough six days of racing and, you know, I just kind of felt that all, you know, felt it all, it all go in that moment. I just felt really, really happy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, c congrats uh, on I that, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, you got sick afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. So I held it together for the interview, thankfully. So I didn't, you know, throw up on, on, on TV right there. So that was good. But I think it must've been something with the food. Like I'd never really got sick like that before in my life. So it was mm -hmm. obvious. I did like, I swam really fast and I did everything that I could to win. You know, I, I gave it all and I left it all in the pool, but yeah, I just got, I just got really sick afterwards, but you know, I was fine after I, um, at, I think 10 minutes until the, the medal ceremony. And I kind of pulled myself together and that, in that 10 minutes there. So it was fine afterwards. And, you know, I was just, just really, really happy with, with, with my son there and, and how that day went. Gotcha. Well, that's, that's good news. I'm, I'm glad you were able to, to bounce back from the sickness and, and get your medal. Um, <laughs> well, well earned did, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of cool. Cause you obviously had, uh, your Hungarian team there, but then, you know, you had quite a few ASU, people there you know bob was there uh for team usa 
obviously Leon was there. Um, did you get to talk to them at all after the race or did they have anything to say to you after that, uh, after that winning time? Yeah, I talked to them a lot afterwards and they were really, really happy for me. So it was just kind of a really good feeling because I, you know, I have the Hungarian team next to me and they're super happy for me and they were cheering me all the way. But then I also have this, this great group of, of, of ASU swimmers as well with, with Bob there. So it's just like kind of, it was a really an amazing feeling to have, to have that kind of backing from, 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 from these people. Yeah. Did you have um, any set goals coming into this meet, you know, whether that was a placement or a time um, in, in either of your events? So what I said, and I think I had this interview like right before Worlds, I said that well, I would be happy if I got into a lot of finals. So, you know, I said, I think I said the exact phrase, I think that any, anything can happen in the finals. So I think I said, I wanted to get into as many finals as possible because, you know, anything can happen in there. And, you know, it, it, I guess it did in, in, a, in a way in the two back. So I just put myself up there in the, in the hundred back. That was the kind of the goal in the hundred back to just get up there in that final and see what it was like, you know, potentially get close to those medal spots. You know, that didn't happen there, but in the two back, you know, the same, I guess the same thing was the goal and, and it happened there. So I was, I was really happy when, when a, I, when I got, I got into the final because I knew I'd, I'd have a lane, I'd have a chance. And that's always the key in swimming is to just put yourself up there, give yourself a chance. And uh, if you did the work, then, then the work will show, show for it. And yeah, it, it, I think it really did in that final. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> I think it's safe to say it did. Yeah. Um, and so you've, it's, it's obvious you've put in the work, so let's kind of back up a little, um, you, you credited the Bowman effect, um, in your post-race interview, I think. Um, so yeah, I, I just love to hear about your time at ASU, I guess, initially, uh, what drew you to ASU and, and why did ultimately, uh, did you choose to, to go there as, as this next step in your swimming career? Yeah. So I think the decision, when I first made the decision during last year's world. So when I saw Leon doing what he did there, I was like, okay, there's obviously something going very, very right over there. And I kind of want to be in that um, group of people because if he's doing so well right there and he was only there for a year by, by that stage. So it took him literally a year to get to the spot where, where he was. So I was, thinking about that a lot going in especially going into that 2 am final because i was still racing the 4 am and the 2 am in that race or in that meet and so going into the 2 am i think i came yeah i came sixth and leon won that by like a mile basically he, he did really really well there and i said if i want to do well in the 2 2 am you know i have to go to that group to give myself a chance and that was kind of the goal coming into in, into the asu team was to to get up there in the 2 am because i think that was my main event um half well maybe even three months ago we didn't really really realize the two back was going to be so good so the main goal was to to get better the two i am and and race lay on as much as possible in practice and you know like i think we we have a really good chemistry between us like me and leon i think we we practice uh so well with each other like we push each other in practice to to heights that we can really reach by ourselves or that's what i'd like to think because you know, he, he does give me a really tough time in practice. And I hope to think that I'd give him a tough time in practice as well, but the, the speed at which we swim, you know, so it's, it's really a great group of, of guys. And I, you know, I can't forget Chase and, and Jay either, who I was training with for, you know, the eight months or so that I was here. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a great group of people and, you know, Bob's, Bob's just done it all. He's, he's one of the best coaches of all time, you know, and, to be with him and to be with a group of people like we have at ASU, it's just those two things coming together. It just makes it so much better. Yeah. So what was your training environment um, like, but, you know, in, in Hungary or before you came to ASU, you know, what, what, what was the training like and who do, who were you doing that training with? Yeah. So I didn't really, well, I had a club uh, that I trained with and on the rare occasion, like I used to train with Milak a lot back in the day, like it's from 2019, I used to train with him like, you know, three or four times a week. We'd have our, our, our own separate practices, but then we'd have our practices where we train together. So 
that was kind of good for my fly and my my fly speed i got got my fly um really up there with them so that helped me a lot but you know after 2020 like during covid i kind of tried to started to train less and less with them and i ended up with like a really young group i guess and they can really race me and i can really race them so it was kind of a bad situation in that respect where i didn't really have anybody like not even not even close to what Leon is for me right now. So it was tough having to train alone and stuff like that. But that's why this year coming to ASU, it gave me such a boost, you know, when I came into practice and I saw, you know, Chase on my right side, Leon on my left side. I was like, I'm in like one of the best training groups of all time, I think here. So yeah, I think that's, that's mainly what it was like. And, you know, I think the training for me, especially for what I need, um as as a swimmer is so much better here than what it was for me back home so i'm just really thankful to be in this group yeah what do you feel like you need as a swimmer uh so, to, to flourish yeah so i mean i don't know how many people know this but the hungarian kind of system is all about yardage so we do a lot of yardage we don't really do kicking on itself or pulling on itself we just do a lot of just swimming in one uh, with with pulling and kicking so we just do that in one it's not separate and we just swim for forever and forever and it's like it feels like it's never ending and that can kind of take away from your motivation and take away from from your just all-around energy that you feel and that was it was kind of hard in the last two years especially after the olympics where i was just putting all in, in all this work and you know, I saw my world junior record that year and I went to the Olympics and I just couldn't even swim a personal best, couldn't even make the semifinals, you know? So that's, especially when you're going through all of that, it really does have an effect and it does have a toll on, on your motivation. But here it's just, you know, the weather's good. We, we swim way less than we, well, what I swam at home. And it's just a higher intensity of practice. So it's kind of like I'm racing every single day, which is what makes the sport fun for me, you know, and that's just what I didn't have back home. Yeah, absolutely. I have to, I have to wonder getting to train with Milok um, as often as you did, were you, did you see his world records coming or, you know, his, his, <laughs> was that a surprise to you at all? Um, I don't really know if I want to comment on that, honestly. Um, I definitely can say that when I trained with him back in the day, he really put in the work and he really did put in the effort when I was swimming next to him. So with that, I would say I wasn't surprised. That's that's all I'm going to say about that. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Uh, so you're you're training at asu now um <clears throat> you got there in december do you feel like there was an adjustment period I, I don't know maybe you're still adjusting but you know how how long did it take you before you felt comfortable in that training environment so i think it was weird because i was on this little racing train i guess before i came to asu because i couldn't start in september i had to start in january and I couldn't get out to ASU until December. So I was just racing in the World Cups and racing in, um, like, I think I had my Hungarian Nationals that year. Um, and I think I did four races or five races that year. And I didn't really train as much as I would have liked to. So coming in with that form, it was so hard for me to start. Like, basically, we had the hardest practices here in, in, in Bob's group in, in winter training. So I was just... I did not know what to expect coming into that because, you know, in Hungary, we usually take two or three weeks off in December. And that's, those are the two or three weeks here at Bob where we have the hardest, actual hardest practices in the year. So that was really, really tough. Those two and two and three weeks for me the, like I was getting, I was getting really been in practice, like really, really being really bad. And then after I survived those two, three weeks, I started getting back into my rhythm, getting back into, you know, fast swimming. And, and I think in a month I was, I was kind of racing the, the big guys again. Yeah. Was there, a, was there a workout or a practice during that Christmas training 
uh, stretch that stood out to you? Yeah, uh, there was, I think it's called, I think he called it the crazy eight or something. And <laughs> it was a hundred flies on a really short interval and eight times. And honestly, I made two of those flies on the interval and there's like i don't think there's ever been a time where i haven't made an interval in hungary and you're like going coming out here and one of like i think that was my second practice here i could not make those intervals and that you know that kind of that kind of hurt me because that's never happened to me before but i got over it and <laughs> we did pretty well in the summer so i'm i'm happy you're back on your feet now yeah uh was that long course or short course that was short course as well. So I didn't even swim in yards ever in my life. So that was an added bonus to the, to that practice, I guess. Yeah. Right. I mean, just not, not even knowing what the numbers mean, let alone, you know, not making the intervals. Um, yeah. at, but how do you feel like overall now that you're more acclimated to it? Um, what do you think of training in yards? I think it's good. Like it really helped my, my turns, especially at worlds. Like, <laughs> my turns weren't even years as, as, as good as, as I would have liked them to be, especially compared to the world. I mean, compared to Hungary, my, my, my turns were pretty decent, like, because I was pushing them out to 15 tr or trying to push them out to 15 as much as I could, but they were not as fast um, or they weren't even as close as fast as I would have wanted them to be. So those, yard practices really helped me in, in in achieving those fast turns you know and maybe i think even my starts and my my finishes got way better so i think and even in this like half year that i was that i spent here so it was like really really beneficial for me to swim in that in that short pool but obviously we we swim i think six practice yeah we swim six practices in yards and three practices in meters so i didn't let the meters go either um and i think those two coming together especially for me like coming from that system just really really boosted me forward and, and helped me a lot this year yeah How, tell me about um the pac-12 ncaa you get you have championship season uh which again you did really well at especially for having just come in in december um you were i think top 12 in all three events at both Pac 12s and NCAAs. So you were top eight. And I think the two back in the four I am at both. Um, so, I mean, you were, you know, you were contributing a, a lot of points to the team um, as a, as a very fresh newcomer. Um, so how do, how do you feel like you handled not only that level of competition, um, you know, in, in a yards format, but also kind of that double, double taper, double meet, um, you know, having two within the span of a few weeks. Right. So that was a huge learning curve for me, actually. I think I had two, two dual meets, but three races, I guess, or three days of racing beforehand. So um, that, those were obviously my first time swimming in yards, first time racing in yards, I mean. And I improved so much over the course of those three races. Like, I think at PAX, I swam the same number of A finals as I did in NCAAs, which isn't really you know, or which, which is kind of weird because you'd think that packs are easier to, to final at than, than NCAAs. And I guess they are, but I was just not at that stage yet at packs where I was at NCAAs. So, um, it was a real, like packs for me was a huge, um, learning curve because I really learned how much you have to swim in the morning or how well you have to swim in the morning. Um, and I think I almost, I almost came ninth in the in the 200 back there as well because I just tried to go as like slow as possible by by getting into the final. You know the way that Europeans swim; it's just like the slowest swimming possible with the fastest outcome, I guess. Um, and Bob told me that you cannot do that again. You don't even, don't even try doing that again. So I was like, okay, I will not do that again. And I think that helped me a lot, not just at NCAA's obviously where it really mattered, but at Worlds as well because. You know, I came second in the in the hundred back in the morning, so that was probably the biggest like um, showing of it um, of me learning how to swim fast in the morning. And you know, I've always had this problem, I guess, of swimming fast in the morning when I was in Hungary because we never practiced it. Like 
at nationals, we'd go five or six seconds slower in the morning than we'd go in the afternoon, which is like, it, it, now it seems ridiculous that I'm here and training here, but back that back there, it's felt normal, you know? So it was like kind of the main thing that we would do, but yeah, I'm really happy that I was able to learn all of these, um, you know, technical aspects of the sport or of the, like U S U S swimming or U S, um, like training, I guess. Um, and it's helped me really a, a lot over the, over the course of the year. Yeah. Did, uh, what, what was your take on just, you know, the college, um, college culture of, of, you know, go sun devils of, of people being really passionate about their team. Um, because you got to go to, uh, the Cal and Stanford dual meets, I think where the, you know, those ASU was swimming really well at that point. Uh, and then obviously the Arizona, you know, there's a big rivalry dual meet and then, um, you know, Pac 12s, you have ton ton of fans in the stand. Um, ASU wins their first Pac 12 title and then NCs, they get second. They have a huge showing there as well. Um, what was your take on just kind of yeah, the the college racing culture and how much fandom there is behind it? You know, it was really it was really interesting actually because I loved it. Like I actually really loved the the team environment, the team spirit, because and and it was weird because when I came here first, I was like, wow, there's actually people cheering for each other here. You know, it's not, it's not, we don't look at it as an individual sport here. We look at it as a team sport kind of because you're, you're getting points for your team um, and for, for your teammates. So I love that aspect of it because I think it just adds a little bit extra to, to all of your swims. It's not just you're swimming for yourself you know like if you go to the to worlds or, or anything like that you're just swimming for yourself you're actually swimming for your team here and i think that um kind of helped me to try and and do even better for the team um and i i, I love cheering for the others and i love the fact that they were cheering for me as well and it was it was it was great to just be in that environment and you know packs winning packs was uh i it was even special for me like you know i wasn't really in the environment i didn't really know what was going on i didn't know how to get points i didn't know how many points i got or who got points or stuff like that so i didn't really know the system yet but i was trying to do as best as i could um in the circumstances and i thought i did uh pretty decently to treat you know try and help the team the team do well and it was a great feeling winning that 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 meet yeah <laughs> that, that makes sense you know just <laughs> kind of being there and and like, I don't really know what's going on, but all my teammates are excited. So, well, you know, let, yeah. let's, let's give it a go. Let's yeah. do my best. Um, yeah. So it just, and then uh, after the college season wound down in terms of training, um, how do you feel like that changed? And do you feel like the intensity changed or, or just the type of training you guys were doing changed at all? Um, so after the college season, we actually went back up to like more 50 meter trainings so we were i think we were at six um and especially we went up to the olympic training center as well and that was my first experience with altitude so that was that was really uh that was really tough going up there uh for me having not you know gone there before and not experienced what altitude was like but i think that helped me a lot as well and then coming back off that we uh try, started to train more in 50 meter pool in, in the 50 meter pool so i guess trainings got maybe longer um in a way like we maybe did more and i think it, they were a bit harder towards the end but it was kind of similar um and yeah i felt that i was able to do it properly i felt that i was able to really give it my all uh, especially after altitude so you know, it was, you know, after, after Hungarian practices, I'm like, it's, this is just, this is just fun kind of in a way. It's like way more fun than what I was, what I was doing there. So it's just way easier for me to deal with it. What, uh, can you tell me a little bit more about <clears throat> the altitude camp at OTC and how, how you handled it, handled it as well as what you guys did there? So we, um, we started pretty low that like we started, um, with low yardage in the beginning and kind of built it up from there. And 
I really like right from the right from the first practice, I was like, okay, this is weird. This is weird. I don't have oxygen here. What am I going to do? You know, I can't come out of the turns properly. Um, but I try to push those turns as much as possible. And that's what Bob told us, like to try and do the same amount of kicks or delta kicks underwater as we do at home, which helped me, you know, a lot because that I think that also changed the way that I was doing underwaters, um, you know, from then on, I guess, and especially leading up to world. So, um, yeah, we, we did a lot of, or obviously we were in the 50 meter pool the whole time. So that was, it was kind of fun for me to get back into the only 50 meter training. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was very new. Um, mostly the, the fact that I didn't have oxygen was new and, and, and just sort of training in that environment. Um, but the trainings were, were pretty similar to what we did back here. So yeah, it was not, um, it wasn't that new in that regard, like with the trainings, but having that like you know environment where i couldn't breathe and you know i was trying to race lay on <laughs> and chase and everybody like with with that um you know being the case it was just kind of so much more difficult than than down here i guess yeah do you feel like you how long were you there and do you feel like you ever got acclimated and or were like able to race leon and chase like you do in a normal practice in tempe yeah so i think we were there for about a month maybe a little bit less than a month so i think we got acclimate, acclimated towards the last week or so so it was still it was still pretty tough then but we it was like easier to deal with it i guess and so yeah it was it was a really good experience for me obviously it was really hard but i learned a lot there about myself and 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 about everybody else you know because we were in a kind of a group environment there so we were with each other you know, 20, 24 seven. So it was good to, to be with the, the team like that. And yeah, I had, a, I had a good time up there. Do you, especially talking about that group setting, do you feel like you've picked up things um, from the, your ASU teammates, as well as the big pro group that's there um, just outside of the pool um, about either just, you know, living and being a human being or being, you know, carrying yourself a little bit more like a professional athlete or, you know, now like a world champion. Absolutely. I mean, I think I've learned a lot from especially Chase and and Leon in in that and, and Jay, obviously. Like Jay is one of the one like one of the best guys I know. Like he's so nice and I just love his personality and and and, and everything, you know, outside of the pool. And you know, inside of the pool sometimes he's just super funny with with what he says like during practice. So it's like it's a great, it's a it's really a great group. Like, you know, we could have really good swimmers here, but maybe not the personalities that that we'd like. But the I think the personalities uh in this in this group are just like perfect, you know. I think they're really, really really great people and it's just great to be around them and and train with them. Um, and I think I've made a lot of, a lot of friends this year and, and I just, I'm just really happy to, to, you know, train with them and, and, you know, it's always, it's, it's always better to train with people that you like than to train with people that you don't like, you know, and, and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, um, it's a great team. And then you guys came down from altitude and then just like had a crazy meet in Tempe where everyone was throwing down really quick times um did did you feel that <laughs> that uh were you also just feeling like really good in the water you know because the, all i can think of is uh we you had a ton of guys go like 48 mid in the 100 free and then reagan smith goes like 203 and the 200 fly uh and i know there were a lot of other fast times that meet but um t tell me about coming coming down from altitude yeah, that was a really fun meet because we did not have a day off, I think, for 36 days or something like that. So um, finally, you know, going to that meet, I think we had a day off before or we had like maybe two days where we only had one practice where we didn't have that at OTC. So um, it was such a good um switch to go from really hard training and, and a really hard environment in OTC to going straight to a meet and and being able to race each other so it was you know I had a lot of fun doing that meet um and then the the day of rest afterwards was so good because we didn't have that for like 36 days so 
it was um it, that was a really fun time and i think i didn't swim as fast as maybe the others like i went 157 and two back and so i'm a one or a 54 0 in the 100 back or something like that but i was pretty close and you know i was like i'm not tapered at all for this meet you know it's just see how it goes and and just try to swim try to swim some good events and that's where I signed the 50 point in the, in the hundred free as well. So I was kind of testing out different events, you know? Um, but yeah, I think that went pretty well. And I, I had a lot of fun in that as well. Nice. Yeah. That was kind of a surprise meet. I think everyone thought it might be a little sleepy and then, you know, to see all the times that came out of it, uh, was, <laughs> was pretty fun yeah. for us as spectators, but, uh, so yeah, just moving forward, you're obviously coming off of a successful summer, successful college season. Uh, what are you looking forward to about just getting back to Tempe, getting back into training, and now your first full college season? Yeah, so I think I missed a lot, like maybe eight or or nine of the the dual meets that we had last year, just because I wasn't here and like mid season stuff like that. So I'm excited to do all of those because you know, the main reason I do this sport is to race. And, you know, that's why I feel, that's where I feel the best. And um, that'll be great to, to, you know, do and, and compete in those and, and just get more, I guess, um, experience under my belt, you know, with the yard, the yards pool and, and, and stuff like that. And just to, you know, it's always, it's always a great environment with, with the team um, just cheering for them um, while we swim. And so I'll be, I'll be really happy to, to go back to those meets, but yeah, um, I think everything else other than that, I just know how it goes around here because I've already been here for so long that I kind of understand, you know, the, the system and stuff like that. So it's not going to be anything new to me, even though I was only here for half a year, but um, the amount of races will be more, I guess, because I just missed them last year. Well, we're excited to see you race uh, in this upcoming season. So, uh, again, congrats on a great summer, Hubie. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down and chat. Um, any parting thoughts or anything we miss before we sign off today? Um, I don't think so, actually. That was pretty thorough. That was pretty nice. So, yeah, thank you for having me on. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.